Okay, folks, this is still transport across cell membranes, but in particular, we are now looking at the effect of osmosis on different cells, animal and plant cells. I think this is probably one of the trickiest bits of the content in this key area, so you might need to go through this a few times. So first off, well, you should have this definition down. It was in the, the last um, uh, PowerPoint, but you just need to memorize this. It is the movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration through a selectively permeable membrane. Pause it and recite it five times. Unpause it, do it without it in front of you, but make sure you know it. Okay, movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration through a selectively permeable membrane. Okay, so to define whether it's a high or low concentration of water, there are three specific terms that you have to look out for. Um, hypertonic, which means there is less water because there's more of something else in it. Okay, hypotonic, which means there is more water and that's because there's less of something dissolved in it. And this one I think you will have seen, isotonic. You'll probably have seen it in terms of sports drinks and things like that, but isotonic means that there is the same water. So I've highlighted those letters because that's how I remember it. I go hypertonic is less, hypo is more, and iso is the same. And that helps me to remember it, but you've got to find your own way. But if they say it's a hypertonic solution, then that means the solution they've put it in has, has got less water. Okay, so you need to be able to work with these words. So, okay, so we'll start with what cells that we have, animal cells. So animal cells, we don't have a cell wall. So because we don't have a cell wall, then if our water concentration is too far from what the concentration is outside, we start to have a problem. It, especially if the water concentration outside the cell is too high. So if the water concentration outside is high, osmosis is the movement of water from a high concentration to a low concentration, so the water would start to move in. Well, if you think of that like a balloon, you're basically just overinflating the balloon and eventually it's going to burst. So you're just going to, the cell is just going to die. On the other side, if it's too low outside, then they start to dump water out of them and so they start to shrivel up and it's might not kill them straight away, but it'll certainly mean that they start to struggle to do what they should do. Isotonic's cool, they'll stay the same. So here would be a picture of a red blood cell. So red blood cells are biconcave discs, so they, they kind of go in on both sides. They look like kind of a filled in donut. So so this this is our, their normal shape. And if it's isotonic, they stay their normal shape. That, that's the kind of bit in the middle. Um, if it's hypertonic, so there's less water outside, so the water has gone out of the cell. Then they kind of shrivel up and they get this kind of, they kind of look like that. It's called crenellated, but bottom line is they've shriveled. If it's hypotonic, so more water outside, water is going to start going in. So it loses this dip and it actually swells right the way up till it's like a fully kind of circular cell or spherical cell, and then it'll then it'll break if you leave it there. So bottom line. You're, this is why you have to keep your blood water concentration reasonably in the reasonable same range. If it goes too high or too low, you have a problem. Plant cells have something totally different. So the animal cells is fairly straightforward. Plant cells, it's still fairly straightforward, but you need to know particular names. Okay, so they have a vacuole, which helps it control its water balance, and they also have a cell wall, and the cell wall basically stops it bursting. So they, they cope with things a lot better than we do. So here's your here's your normal cell. Okay, so here's your vacuole in the middle and the vacuole in the middle is just storing up cell sap, which is mainly water. So if I put it into distilled water, so that's pure water, 100% water basically. So this is hypotonic. Now, all that happens to the cell there is, so water starts going into the cell. So it's it's flooding into the cell by osmosis and you'll notice the vacuole just gets bigger and it pushes the cell membrane right out to the edge of the cell wall and the cell wall even bulges out a little bit but this cell does not break it just bulges out okay this is called a turgid cell okay a plant cell that you put in a hypertonic solution in this case they're saying salt solution so what happens here is the the water starts going out of the cell. And as it goes out of the cell, the vacuole gets smaller. 
and the cell membrane you can see it's starting to fall away from this it's still anchored at various points around the cell wall but it's starting to fall away from it and the cell wall it may be it might this looks pretty straight but sometimes you see it kind of sagging in just a little bit but it's not actually totally lost its shape this is called plasmalized so two new words turgid plasmalized as well as your hypotonic and hypertonic um, and you need to be able to describe it in terms of the vacuole so like what happens to it the cell wall and the cell membrane so you have to describe those three parts oh i've forgotten i'd written that bit in there okay so yeah when it comes to describing it make sure that you can refer to the vacuole cell membrane cell wall turgid or plasmalized are your correct terms so any turgid cell it has to go into something that's hypotonic cell wall goes out cell membrane goes up against the cell wall and the vacuole becomes huge any plasmalized cell has to have been in something that's hypertonic with less water so water is left by osmosis cell wall will fall in a bit cell membrane will fall in from there and the vacuole will be much much smaller okay this experiment is the one that we would do in school but you have quite a nice little one to do at home if you want to in your notes um, just doing a comparison just with a very simple high salt or or pure water um, so if we were in school what we try and do is do take potato cores take a start mass and then use different water concentrations so not just a lot of water and a little bit of water um, what we'd have is like 0%, 1%, 2%, 5%, 20% of salt. So we'd have lots of different water concentrations. So the higher the salt, the lower the water. And then you'd leave them for 30 minutes, absolute minimum, like an hour would be better, overnight would be better still. Take them out, dry them off so the water isn't a problem because the water on the outside would also weigh something. Reweigh them and then you work out the percentage change in mass. Now you have to do percentage change because they don't always start at the same mass. And then we would do a graph of mass against water concentration. Now this is quite a common graph, so I would like you to at least see it. Um, it might be one of the ones that we ask in questions when we're going over this. You can work out from the graph what the isotonic concentration of the cell must have been because at isotonic there will be no gain or loss. So the graph will look something like this. Um, so up the side, we've got our percentage change in mass. And along the bottom, this has got this, so this is increasing sugar. So if it's increasing sugar, what that means is decreasing water concentration. So this is actually a very poor graph. That should have been at zero. So at zero sucrose, which basically means 100% water, you'll notice you've got quite a big percentage increase in mass and then we increased the sugar so decrease the water and you still got an increase but not as much by the time you got up to 0.4 you'd actually started to lose mass so between 0.2 and 0.4 we must have crossed over from this bit here where it's hypotonic more water so it's gaining water to 0.4 where it was starting to lose water so it must have been a hypertonic solution so we can actually find that this point here uh, was all gained down below all lost and that point right in the middle must have been isotonic so that kind of graph that's probably i think one of the most complicated graphs that you would ever see that you'd see in that five okay that's that